Hey y'all, what's going on? Your boy here, Apollo from Down Down Up Up, and yes, if you haven't figured it out by now, guess who went to their very first Dynamite this week? Oh man, it was fun. Uh, really, really, really enjoyed myself at this show. Uh, it was worth it so much because I haven't really been to one of these things in full and forever. And I'm just talking about wrestling. When it comes to Dynamite, man, I've been waiting for AEW to come to Canada for a hot, hot hundo. Because going back to Rico, a.k.a. Coca-Cola Coliseum, there's not really a bad seat in the house. I've been there for a few WWE live shows. Uh, one of my favorites being Roadblock 2016. And that had decent enough seating. But this show, I felt like, wait a second... This is good. Why is everything in here so much better than I remember? Not that I have anything against previous memories of seating. It's just, man, it, it, it feels better. It feels much better. And then I think about it, oh, it's because of the AEW stage. It takes up so much of the bottom room. It means they've cut chairs. They've cut seating availability because it it's bigger than like a WWE live event there. So... Less fans, but still just as much amazing excitement. Had a blast going to the show, so thank you, AEW, from getting there and just enjoying the warm crowd reaction to everything because we got to enjoy Dark Elevation. That was nice. I really wasn't even sure if we were going to get one of those shows before the Dynamite because I'm thinking, wait a minute, Rampage should only be an hour. Wouldn't you film both Darks and then Rampage? But no, not that I'm complaining because I only went to the one show, so... Got to get a dark and then a dynamite. And if you're wondering why I've waited so long to post my sort of results review slash reaction feel towards this. Well, one, I wanted to wait and see how Rampage went. And two, busy. Because let's be honest, there's a lot more I want to talk about today. But we'll get to that in a different video. So when it comes to dynamite, it was great. We started off with Renee Paquette joining the team and it just felt right 100% right I know it was highly rumored but it was so great to hear the response from her when she came out there I can tell you 100% being in the crowd everyone was happy to see her and then she brought out one of my favorite things and I finally got to see him live Christian Cage and it started off pretty good started off pretty good with the reaction but then he took that shot at the Leafs and oh you you knew he wasn't going to keep the full crowd on that but Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, that match is candidate for Dynamite Match of the Year. I'm dead serious. Those two exceeded any expectations I feel like we all had. Because the crowd was ready for this, but they weren't ready for the match we got. It was unbelievable. The table spot, the false finishes, the chemistry, like these two have had tons of matches before against each other. It made me believe this was the culmination of a feud. The fact that this wasn't on pay-per-view still surprises me whenever I think about this match now. Because it was pay-per-view worthy. By far. Fantastic. But of course, of course, even though Jungle Boy hit the kill switch, you naughty little pedestrian. Luchasaurus was able to hold on. Hell, he came back from the table spot and set up like Kane, which started a great chant of Kane is better or Kane's is better, whatever it was. It was very funny. But uh, Christian interfered a little bit one too many times, even though at the start he was uh, on the announce, uh, doing announcing. But uh, Luchasaurus was able to hit that burning hammer and put him away. And I was not complaining about this whatsoever. Luchasaurus gets the biggest win of his AEW, uh, AEW career singles-wise. And Jungle Boy still chasing. So really, I don't feel bad that he lost again. His vindication will most likely come when he beats Christian Cage. Because I feel like that has to be what we're building to. I don't really care when. This is probably my favorite feud in AEW at the moment. It's been fantastic for me. Uh, moving things on in no real particular order. I'm just going off of what I remember on the show. Uh, Moxley and Hangman cut some great promos together. That was hot. The crowd was pretty hot for both of them. I am happy, though, that when Hangman initially came out, I heard more boos than cheers. Because if y'all don't know, I am done 
putting any stock on Hangman Page ever since he screwed the Dark Order. I'm sick of his emotional storylines. I'm just, I'm done with it. I'm done with it. So I hope Mox crushes him next week is really what that comes down to. But they were both hot for the crowd. Uh, MJF was sitting in a skybox at one point during that promo. It was literally right above where myself and friend were sitting. So... Didn't even have to look at his stupid face um, in person. Moving on, um, what what else? Jericho and Danielson was fantastic, and that was some A-class booking. I told myself, what if Garcia does indeed turn on Danielson in this? Because it gets the pop in Canada, and Jericho can't lose the Ring of Jericho Championship yet, and he didn't. And that's exactly what happened after a fantastic back and forth, because these two just don't disappoint. Even if they're given four minutes like they were in WWE, no, no, they're fantastic. They know how to make a match with the time that they're given. And they did. They did. It was great. And then, of course, Garcia looks like he's having an issue with Jericho. But no, hits Danielson with the championship. One, two, three. Chris Jericho wins it. Although, you little troll, Jericho. You tease us with Judas, but then you play the full thing on Rampage. I understand you have to give that crowd something different. But you stole, or tried to steal it. To be fair, myself and the crowd kept singing Judas regardless. It just wouldn't have been as hot as if uh, the music had been playing. But still, great match. Fun stuff. Loved it. Um... The women's tag team match was okay. Uh, it was sort of just another match that really didn't need to be on, but the crowd were still pretty hot for everyone. It was just annoying that, like, I I'm not a big fan of Hikaru Shida, and she had to win, so, of course, that was, like, my subtle, just stone face of the evening, especially when it came to a roll-up, but is what it is. They were hot for Jamie Hayter. AEW need to pull the trigger with Jamie Hayter. They should have done it at all out, but I like Tony Storm, so I'm not complaining. Anyway, what else, though? Because my brain is still a bit fuzzy because I have something else, like I've said, I want to discuss with y'all, but later video. Probably today, though. Keep an eye on the channel. But um, what else is worth the discussion at the moment? That maybe Oh, well, Warjo was out, to be fair. I'm completely forgetting about Warjo. They were hot for the crowd, without a doubt. Destroyed the factory. Had a fun little segment after with FTR, Brian Cage, and his new buddies. But then... Talk about a swerve. I'm telling myself, wait a second, what is going to be a surprise on this show? Because you know we're going to get some, and probably I'm going to forget discussing a few in this video, because I'm just trying to go off my fresh memories of where I sat. Sean Spears came back in Canada with the Perfect Ten gimmick <clears throat> and similar music. I couldn't believe it. I don't know how AEW's done this, but... It was amazing, and the crowd was so hot for it, especially considering the fact that I was in Scotiabank Arena when the 10 chant really got over, like over enough that it stayed with him for the rest of his career. Before that in NXT, it was okay, but TakeOver Toronto 2016, that is when the 10 chant got on the charts, if you know what I'm talking about. So him coming back with it there was really special. And I really wish he would have given us the promo he gave at the end of Rampage or maybe after the show Rampage then. Because if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's on AEW's YouTube uh, channel. And uh, it's it's really heavy. Uh, Spears goes on to why he's been gone for a bit and what he's been going through lately. And it, it'll make you cry. Really, it'll make you cry if you connect with him like some of the fans do, including myself. I'm really happy to see him back, though. And... Cannot wait to see what he's going to do with uh, his 10 gimmick back in AEW. Please just don't disappear in the fold of things again. AEW, Sean Spears is fantastic. Fantastic. Use him. And you, he won't disappoint you. Really is all I'm trying to say. Um, And then, uh, oh boy, I had it and then I lost it. There. Oh, yes. Oh, you want to talk about when the crowd, in my opinion, was hottest of the night? It was Billy Gunn versus Swerve. Uh, the match was good, by the way, and uh, credit, I, I didn't really want to see Billy Gunn squashed, and he didn't get squashed. He lost via screwage because the referee doesn't know how to use his eyes. Um, but the crowd you know, just loved the acclaimed, and the acclaimed's roasts were fantastic. And uh, I'm not going to go into details about it, though. If you've seen the show, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but uh, uh, the crowd just loved chanting for Billy Gunn and Daddy Ass in multiple ways you can't imagine. I tried to get so many chants started, and at least, like, 50% of them were just bangers for the crowd. So, you'll love to see it. You'll love to see it. Fantastic stuff. Fun stuff. But then we get to that main event, and that's when it really hits me. Once Jericho and Danielson came out in the middle of the show, I'm thinking, 
Oh, so Cassidy's got this. Cassidy's going to win the All Atlantic Championship. Right? It's hilarious because someone in front of me heard me. I said it out loud and just turned around and looked at me with like a face just sick of everything. Oh, God, I hope not. Well, sir, you came to the wrong show because in the main event, Pac and Orange Cassie put on another one of their bangers and Cassidy finally got one over Pac to win his first championship in AEW. And this came at a great time too. I was starting to get on the bandwagon of not so much enjoying Orange Cassidy anymore, but he didn't. He finally won the championship with a great story with one of his best rivals, dare I say his best rival in AEW, Jericho is debatable because they had a sort of a drawn out feud. But when you think about it, it's been Pac and Orange Cassidy that go together like bread and butter whenever they fight in AEW. And, and Cassidy won. The thing that pisses me off watching the show back at my friends, they freaking put the tombstone on the stage in the commercial. That's stupid. That was a hot part of the crowd by far. Anyone who watched it on Fight TV didn't have a problem, but I'm talking about uh, TSN, um, TNT kind of deal. But when Cassidy won, it was so special. Apart from that, uh, Statlander returned after the show when Cassidy said he didn't want to carry the uh, the belt. So he gave him a backpack. Everyone hugged it out. Dan Housen was there too. He was actually on the show stopping Pac from grabbing the little ring bell hammer. Uh, that was hot. And uh, aside from that, not too much to talk about with Dark Elevation. Just nice to see some people on. I'll save that if you guys want to check that out on YouTube because it was okay. It, it was, you know, it was a dark. It was fine. Good stuff, good stuff. Some nice surprises on it too, one that especially pissed off my friends. Um, but I, I can't really complain. M more or less, it was so fun to go to Dynamite. I hope they do not wait another three years to come back to Canada. Please come back next year. Please, please do it, please. Because we'd love to have you back. Preferably in the same venue. I don't need this to go to Scotiabank Arena. I am happy going to Rico, aka Coca-Cola Coliseum. So, giving you guys my impressions of Dynamite, it was a fun time, the crowd was amazing. Uh, I guess one last shout out, my personal MVP of the show, Justin Roberts is fantastic at keeping the energy and entertainment going during any kind of break or pre-hype. He is amazing. That is the first time I've seen him live doing anything. That man is just fantastic at his job. I don't know why WWE let him go, but maybe he found himself more at AEW because he's great. He is fantastic. And I, I already knew. I think you guys already knew too. He has always been great. But go to a show and just watch him entertain you. That's the MVP of the night for me. The unexpected MVP. Justin Roberts, you're great. You're fantastic. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, love to see you guys. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, by the way, sort of a new background for today because some renovations are going on right now where I am. But, uh, yeah, you know, we got, the, we got the calendars. We got some posters. We got uh, my stack of tapes because, honestly, I love watching VHS, so I'm going to keep that going. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's looking looking okay in this spot. Maybe I'll keep filming here. You guys let me know. This actually isn't a bad spot. This, this was more of just convenience for now. But the, now that I think about it, I kind of like this spot. But anyway, love to AEW. Thanks for the fun. See you guys later. Keep it real.